Okay, this is Gina Versa. I'm here with Anthony C. Ferrante, back on the podcast after a two-year uh, two-year uh, break from it. I uh, hope the last time you were on wasn't too bad. Oh, I had to avoid you last year. I mean, I was <laughs> I was so angry at how nice you were. You know, you, you know, and I was like, no, no, it, you know, you got to be a lot harsher. So, so we're back, and you're gonna you're gonna be asking the hard hitting questions this time, correct? <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, they do uh, less uh, less Bill Murray questions, unfortunately. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you for uh, coming back on the show. I really appreciate it. Um, the last episode you were on that was a that was a really uh, fun experience. So. You know, it's always glad to have guests back, and um, you know, it's uh, always cool running into you at Comic Con, you know, other events, and uh, yeah, joining us again to uh, promote a new film that I had the pleasure cool. pleasure of uh, seeing a sneak preview. Yeah, no, you were you were one of the first people to see footage from the movie at Comic Con. And um, how how is it? Um, Coming back to Comic Con, uh, post Sharknado, what what about Comic Con so special to you, Anthony? Uh, you know, you know, I mean, I just think it's it's the preliminary kind of like people starting to get a little taste of what we're up with, up with, you know, what we're trying to do, what we're up against, you know, like oh they they they're doing this this time or they're doing that, and you know the fans made the Sharknado movies. Without them, we wouldn't have Sharknado. It wasn't anything but fans discovering us that night it aired and that was what made it so cool so you know being there and being surrounded by fans that love what we do and being able to you know tease something brand new to them that that, that makes it worth it yeah definitely and you know you have such a loyal fan base um you know i was uh, i think a, a a friend of mine was in uh, japan recently he said there was an all shark channel just playing a, a marathon of the sharknado movies <laughs> Japan loves their Sharknado. Oh my gosh, it's it's crazy, and their posters are insane. Yeah, I, it's 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 like I love their posters. I wish I could get a set of every single one of the the Japanese Sharknado posters. I, I, I love them. I do have some of the DVDs, so I, I get to experience them by uh, uh, by default. Right. So. Yeah, and and we'll get to. Uh, we were going to uh, just talk uh, about Zombie Tideway, but I just had a question for you. If uh, you know, just looking back on uh, Sharknado, um, do you find any of the uh, kind of any like anime or uh, Jap Japanese uh, film inspiration anywhere in there? In, in Sharknado, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I I mean, I think one thing that uh, you know was very conscious conscious uh crouching tiger hidden dragon kind of thing was the scene at the end of uh the first sharknado where he jumps into the shark mm -hmm. I, I believe i believe in the original script you know finn is on the ground and the shark just kind of flops over and chomps on him and and i kind of go no he needs to jump into the mouth of the shark <laughs> and 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 I, and I remember there was a little i had there's a lot of nervousness about it because uh you you had this thing where you know generally you know the movies are crazy at the asylum, but it, it's it was one of those things that kind of just went just one extra step, you know, beyond beyond the normal crazy. Mm -hmm. And and I remember showing it to one of the producers, and they're going, hmm, "Is that a little too over the top?" And going, "No, no, it's not. Yeah, okay, we'll leave it." <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, Phew. and we and I never told like I I never uh, put it into the script. Yeah, I never told anybody what I was going to do with it, but I knew very early on that that's what I wanted to do. And so, you know, I, I've learned just in general, you just don't put some of the crazier stuff in. Now, later with Sharknado, you know, it, it was expected to be crazy, so it didn't matter. You can let your, you know, your your crazy, you know, flag fly with those films. Mm -hmm. uh, but but that first movie, it's like, you know, you're trying to go, okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to do it, and then they can see it as opposed to explaining it. Uh, th th actually that happened on the third one as well is that I, I mentioned once to one of the producers that I wanted to do this sort of James Bond thing and they're like, no, 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 that's too over the top. That's, 
that's that's like you know because it was the little thing where you know James Bond circle thing like he has on there, but instead it's Finn with the chainsaw, <laughs> and I, I knew it could work and I knew how I wanted to do it. So when we were doing green screen, I shot it anyway. Okay. I shot him doing what I wanted, and then I showed them sort of a uh, you know sort of a, a rough uh, emulation of what I wanted, and they go, oh yeah, okay, we got to use it. <laughs> <laughs> so some sometimes you gotta you gotta show the ideas because. You know, it's people don't necessarily know what you're what you're trying to go for, and it, it kind of gets scary. Yeah, <laughs> especially when you have someone as deranged as me doing these movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you did uh, six films, so you survived. <laughs> I survived Sharknado one through six. That's a uh, it's a pretty pretty tall order, and we got to tell a complete story from beginning to end with the same cast and the same director, and that's it's a major accomplishment. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's uh, there's not even uh, some uh, Marvel movies that have done that. Yeah, yeah. so I'm pretty 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 pleased. Definitely. And let's talk. Let's uh, just change topics to uh, zombie tidal wave, and. Can you walk us through just the the genesis of this uh, this project without giving anything too much away? Uh, it was a couple of years ago, and Ian came to me and he said three words: "Zombie Tidal Wave." And it's like you know he he was working on a story with Thunder Levin, who uh, you know was a writer on the first four Sharknados, and mm-hmm. uh, you know they said, "Are you in?" I'm like, "Yeah, let me see the script. Let's talk about it. Sounds fun." And uh, it took a while because we kept getting Sharknado movies, so you know there wasn't time to actually do another film in between. Mm-hmm. And uh, at some point, I came on board to, to work on the script with them, and uh, we got a green light, and off we were. Uh, I think for me, you know, I've never done a zombie movie before, so uh, you know, I was kind of excited to play around with a different type of threat. Um, and you know, clearly the title you know, kind of evokes a little of the silliness of Sharknado. But I think that, you know, whereas Sharknado, the villain, is Sharknado, Mm -hmm. uh, this one, you know, the tidal wave brings the zombies in, but then it's a zombie movie. And, uh, you know, I, I, I rewatched pretty much all my favorite zombie movies and just really tried to, to, to be reminded of what worked and what didn't and what's been done before and when and how. And zombie movies and most uh, things, that's what happens. You know, they, you know, you have to shoot them in the head. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so 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 what we tried to do with this movie that was was different is we try to just kind of mess around with expectations. You know, normally in zombie movies, it's you shoot the zombie in the head, and uh, you know they die. And you know why not try to find another way? And there, there was a clever way of getting rid of them, and so it allowed us to kind of play with the conventions of what people are expecting. You know what happens when they when they bite you, and you know what makes that different. Mm-hmm. You know the idea, like if you die, do you, does that mean you turn into a zombie, or do you have to be bitten in order to be turned into a zombie? So there's there's a lot of kind of rules that we kind of played around with to see if we can make them, uh, you know, work. And then um, I was also, you know, we were going to be shooting the movie in Thailand, and I thought, you know, uh, let's embrace kind of the 1980s-ness of, of zombie movies, you know, mm-hmm. George Romero and uh, Fulci, Lucio Fulci zombie films, you know, that shot mm-hmm. in, you know, Asian countries and stuff sometimes, and and just kind of go for that kind of feel, um, even though it was set in modern day, and then throw our whole, uh, you know, quirky sensibilities into it. And yeah. so, so that that's that's what kind of turn, turn, turned out in the when we threw it all in the blender. And, you know, I was very adamant that I wanted to do a lot of, practical gore effects you know in sharknado we got a little lazy because we were doing so much and sharks we could never really do practical anyway so it was like okay so we'll put that in there but here our threat needed to be physically there and aside from a little bit of duplication and stuff um you know i, I think you know old school you know gore zombie stuff is a way is the way to go so aside from a few things that were impossible for us to do i think there's 85 to 90 percent of the the effects and gore in the movie is is uh, practical, mm-hmm. and uh, we pu- we pushed it. Uh, I I told Ian early on, look, I'm going to let the blood to run out of blood, and so I'm just going to let it keep rolling, and we'll figure out how to pull it back in the uh, in the uh, in the edit. And so when we delivered it to the network, I was basically saying, look, let's do what they did in the '80s. Let's put it, let's go overboard. 
and then they'll come back and go, oh, we got a snip here, we got a snip there, and we'll get it to exactly the spot it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So it went on very long. It went over the top long. And, uh, and so we get the notes back from, from them and uh, standards and practices and stuff, and they go, oh, yeah, this is fine. And we're like, well, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is okay. Like, we have, like, a zombie biting the back of some guy's skull and literally ripping the back of the skull apart with blood flying everywhere. And it's like, okay. So we, we basically went in and trimmed it back to where we originally wanted it. And so the movie is the movie in terms of the gore that we intended. And that's, that's, that shows you how liberal things have come from the 80s and just on television in general, what mm-hmm. you can get away with. Yeah, and was there any uh, sort of uh, notes or changes um, besides the uh, zombie or gore? Uh, what do you, What do you mean in terms of oh, uh, um, from the script process or in post? Or? Oh, just in post. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if there's any significant changes, it's stuff that we we ended up doing editorially on our own. Uh, g- generally, in the la- at least the last two Sharknados, and in particularly this, we come back with much way too much movie Mm -hmm. so you know on the last two sharknados we had like a two and a half hour cut of the film once we came back from shooting and in this one we had a two hour cut and we had to deliver an 86 minute movie Mm -hmm. and for me that i like that i I know there's a lot of filmmakers that can get precious about every little thing but i kind of feel like when you have more to play with you know little here and there or little moments you can kind of pace it up really well. Yeah. So I, I actually enjoy I enjoy, I enjoy cutting that stuff down. And so you know there there was a lot of uh, little nips and tucks that we did in terms of streamlining the mythology and the in the script. There was over explanation that we we knew was a little too much, but we didn't know what was necessary to get the story across. If that makes sense, because you know there was a lot of mythology that what we felt was essential. But we, 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 I think we needed to see how it was going to play. So we had this eight-page, you know, revealing exactly what's going on scene, Basil Exposition. And then once we got into edit, we got, got had it cut down to like about maybe, you know, two or three pages or two or three minutes. And it worked. And it worked much, much better than... Um, uh, you know, then, then if we would have just kept it short, because there was a lot of t- room to play with, and we were able to cherry pick exactly the things that we needed to tell the story. Right. So, so that that was one one of the things of just actually simplifying. And what the, the thing I, I sometimes say is kiss. You know, K I S S. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like so audiences don't necessarily need to know everything. They just needed a, a why and a how. And sometimes they're happy. And in Sharknado's case, we never gave them any of that. We purposely said that we were never going to explain how they started or why. And even though, <laughs> even though in the fifth and sixth movie we go, oh, they've been around since prehistoric times or this or that, if you really look at those two movies side by side, they basically, they caught, you know, when they sent Gil back in time, he basically went through time and left a trail of Sharknado's. And it's, it's like a snake eating its tail. It still doesn't explain why the first Sharknado started. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and also knowing that he was going to go back in time when we were shooting the fifth movie, if you look at the cave paintings in the fifth movie at the beginning, and it's a very lovely, if you miss it, that cave painting is signed by Gil. Hmm. So we knew that he left that there for his father. So that's so there's fun stuff like that. So with the zombie movie, we really wanted to just try to try to keep it, you know, as bare bones as possible. And that was one of those little minor changes. And you know, there's also some structural things. So we had a lot of intercutting that we did. You know, a lot of stories that you know that are going on concurrently. Like there's three different like pockets of stories at one point. Mm-hmm. And so in the edit, you know, you think something's going to play earlier, and then you're moving it later, and you're just kind of jumbling it around until you got the right flow. Yeah. Uh, but nothing, nothing that was, uh, there was nothing lost that we were like, oh my gosh, I wish we would have kept it. But, you know, the movie is the movie and, mm-hmm. and, it, and it's a tight movie with no pee break. And if you're <laughs> watching it on TV, you're lucky because you have commercials because now you have a pee break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, all the, uh, all the best zombie movies like Romero just, you know, I mean, besides, uh, in, in Night of the Living Dead, besides the funeral scene, you just get... Um, not the funeral, excuse me, besides the, in the cemetery, they just throw you right into it. 
and it seems uh, a little similar. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, there was uh, the, the, actually, you know, there's there's things too when you're shooting, uh, you know, and and that you start recognizing. And there was a, a thing that you know we were shooting the movie, and uh, there's the first encounter that's, that that happened in the script. Mm-hmm. But we had put a lot of character development and added some additional stuff prior to that. So my editor was cutting all this together, and I realized. Yeah, if we want to keep this character development, it's going to end up being like 10 or 12 minutes before we see anything that's sort of zombie-esque in this movie. And um, I, and I knew that if, if that was the case, development because we will have to get right to them finding the, uh, the first zombie. So there was a little sequence um, that, that I had written... Uh, during the main uh, uh, tidal wave portion of it, that uh, um, I I had someone being kind of yanked underwater, and I thought you know it's kind of like you know sort of like the shark, but you get the mm-hmm. idea that it's a zombie doing it. And uh, and I go okay, well if we take that moment because we haven't shot it yet, and let's now make it two people, and or, or and let's make it a couple, and let's oh it's two girls, and then I think I change it to a couple. Mm-hmm. So we kind of literally like three days before we were wrapped. I was going, we got to make a teaser. We have to do some teaser that establishes what's going on, have a zombie, have a threat, and have something fun so then we can earn our, our 10 minutes of exposition. And so that's what we did. We literally created this thing quickly. Um, I had a buddy of mine uh, you know, uh, brainstorm with me while I was in the middle of it, and we figured it out. And then uh, we shot it. Our, <laughs> our, our cameraman, our Steadicam operator, was an actor in it and an extra. And we, we made it work. And it's actually a great little little opening. It's mm-hmm. very, very evocative of the 1980s. Yeah. It's like, so a, I, it's I like a mini movie. Really, really yeah, it's well. I mean, in Sharknado, in Sharknado, we basically make a whole movie for the teaser. Like the Sharknado, it's like twelve minutes to twenty minutes of a you know before you even see credits. Uh, in this case, it's very short. It's probably two minutes, three minutes tops. But um, but it's a, it's a good like you know tease as to what's going to come. Yeah. Uh, but that's what that's the thing is as you're going along and you know again having experience kind of doing this over and over again, you start realizing what's going to happen if you don't do something. And we would have had to figure something else out in post if we didn't do that at that moment. Exactly. So, um, so in terms of changes, that, that was a, that was a big change. I mean, I, I know, I think even the scene number stayed the same. It was the same scene number that was like, you know, scene 40 or 50 when technically it's, you know, it's, it's the first scene in the film. So, yeah. Uh, and um, going to uh, just storytelling, uh, this is the God, seventh movie you've done with uh, Ian Zarian. And w- what about him just makes him such a great everyman? How is it like reteaming with him? Talk a little bit yeah. about. You know, uh, you know, look, you know, you, ha- you get a shorthand when you've worked with people before. And uh, that, that makes things a lot easier. You know, I could say, Ian, do this or grunt and you know he'll know exactly what it is or i i need a line here and he'll he'll instinctively know exactly what's going on there so there's there's that safety net where you know you know i trust him and he trusts me and we we just try to make it work uh i i think that uh you know be, going through six shark natos is a, is, a, is a lot and so coming into this thing you know we we kind of knew how shark nato started mm-hmm. so you know we knew that literally we had Literally, we had to start from scratch on this thing. We'll have some goodwill, you know, from the fans and stuff. You know, we need to create our own identity with this thing. So, yeah. you know, the, his character, Hunter Sean, this is a little more, uh, there's a little more of an edge to him than, than Finn. Mm-hmm. You know, he's definitely a lot edgier. Uh, there's still that heroic vibe that he carries throughout. And, you know, it's a zombie movie. A lot of people kept saying, oh, are you going to have cameos? Is it going to just be over the top? And it's like, you know, really, it's kind of goes back to like establishing the world like we did with the first uh, Sharknado movie. Mm-hmm. You know, so we we basically tried to create a, you know, an honest to goodness, you know, fun, you know, creepy zombie movie. So, yeah, and that's I think we I think we I think we we achieved that. And, you know, uh, there, there was a lot of, there was occasionally uh, we had uh, uh, people going, oh, well, you know, let's let's put a let's put a uh, Sharknado reference in or this or that. And 
we were all kind of like, no, we're not going to do that. Actually, we we can't. We just we're not we're not going to do it because it, people are going to kind of expect it, mm-hmm. and I think it'll take people out of the movie. Yeah, there, there was there was I think someone was going made it. You know, there was a, at some point in the script there was a chainsaw and then there was you know let's have a shark and it's like no let's just let's stay away from it let it be its own thing. You know, it doesn't, we don't need to stop the movie to wink at the audience. I, th- I think it's enough when you have, you know, you know, writer, director, and a, and a star from that franchise. I think that's more than enough Sharknado for, 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 for something. And like, no disrespect to Sharknado, I'm just saying that it's just, it's, it's more than enough uh, to have a, a, a linkage to that franchise without ha- hitting people over the head. Now, that, that said, there was a, there was a, a little, um, mm-hmm. uh, a little idea uh, that you know, I was watching a lot of the the Fulci stuff, and you know, there's that amazing moment in in Zombie where you mm-hmm. know the zombie fights the shark. But uh, you know, even even if we attempted or tried to do something that that, that there was no way that we could top what they did in that movie. So it's oh, like yeah. that. Don't even go. It's not even worth going there because if you do again, it would be something that literally would stop the film. Yeah, and there there and there's no way that like they had guy in a zombie suit fighting a real shark i'm mm-hmm. not going to put uh, an actor or a stunt man in the water to fight a real shark as much as cool as that sounds it's just not safe and it's not going to happen so it would have been a cgi shark and it just wouldn't have looked good uh that said there, there, there were some other um there were some other uh um uh homages to other zombie movies that we did try to do things and try to put our spin on it um there's a it was released under a bunch of different names, and uh, I, you know, it's definitely early '80s, so the years are off because, uh, uh, you know, they kept re-releasing it. But I think it was around '80, '80, '81. It was a movie. Uh, this the second title was uh, Doctor Butcher, MD. Do you remember that movie? Uh, vaguely. So it was. A, it was. A, you know, it's definitely a foreign. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, sounds very. You know, kind of a zombie. Uh, say it again. Oh, I said it sounds very foreign. The, uh, the yeah, title, yeah. yeah. So, but 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 they they have this really really cool thing in it mm-hmm. where uh, the um, uh, the the guy took a uh, zombie was coming after him and he took a rowboat motor and smashed it into the zombie's head. Nice. And you know it, it was nineteen eighties level kind of stuff, so it was all right. But it, it's it's a great moment. But it's but it, you know it, it you know it, it could have just in terms of the you know the head and all that stuff we could have done a little bit more with it, but that but I still love that moment. I go you know let's see if we can try to pay homage to that. And in Thailand where we shot, they have these uh, longboat motors. Mm-hmm. You know they're this lo- they're, they're they're these long kind of like uh, shaft thing, and then you have the ro- the the motor blade at the end of it. And we go, well, all right, let's, if we, you know, they did one, let's do the longboat motor and let's take out three or four of the zombies with it. <laughs> and, uh, and we did, and we did a practical head, uh, that we literally destroyed with the, with the, with actual motor. I mean, we're usually, we're destroying it with the actual motor and there's no trickery in terms of digital facts. And, uh, then we did some, some, uh, in camera tricks for like ripping up the guts of, uh, one of the zombies. So you know, it, it was, it was fun kind of going back to that. You know, I started off doing makeup effects and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like that kind of stuff and I love, love trying to figure out clever ways of, of doing stuff like that. So we, yeah. Yeah, we definitely did a lot of it in this movie. Oh, of course. And, uh, going off of, um, the, uh, filming location, you said you filmed in Thailand. How was, uh, how was the weather there? How were the uh, conditions? If you wanted to, uh, have any, uh, horror stories for the audience? Oh, that's no, no, there's no horror story. I mean, the crews, the crew there is, is incredible. We had more crew than we probably ever had on a film because that's the way they do things in Thailand. Lovely, lovely people. Uh, we shot on, we, we prepped in Bangkok, shot on an island called Krabi. Um, I, I think the, 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 the hard part about it is, is that it's very hot and humid. Yeah. And when we, when we shot the, the, the last Sharknado in Romania, it was one of the coldest winters there. So in a year period, we shot in the coldest conditions we could have ever done. And then we shot in the hottest conditions we could ever <laughs> shoot in. And I don't really particularly care for the heat that much. So it definitely was making sure I had a lot of fluids and mm. electrolytes and all that stuff because, you know, it's, it's definitely hot and humid. But uh, the biggest challenge is, is the makeup because, you know, it, you know, when you're doing prosthetics, 
you know, sometimes you have to you have to keep it keep on it, and make sure you know the makeup doesn't slide off, and you got to make sure that whatever paints on isn't revealing something that you don't want to see. So there's a lot of touch ups, and we we had to do a little extra color correction uh, to make sure that some of the the real skin didn't seep through on the zombies. Right. Um, so so that, that 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 definitely is a was a was a hurdle and also just you know a lot of the the, the thailand uh, extras you know who are playing zombies you know we really had to kind of talk to what it is because in la for the most part uh you know extras kind of some of them want to be actors but they have a basic understanding of what being an extra is mm-hmm. uh there they're just it's just kind of a, a, a gig to make a little bit of money some of them are into it some of them get it but mm-hmm. a lot of them, you know, it's it's a different world. So you're you're literally having to give them zombie training on the fly. So they're not looking at the camera, or they're not going over the top, and you know, or they're not hurting themselves because you know there there's there's a lot of stunts going on. So yeah, it's a uh, you know it's a different it's a different kind of uh, universe in that respect. Mm-hmm. But uh, but it, you know the movie looks gorgeous. We got to actually shoot on moving boats. We were we were shooting out in the middle of the ocean there, and it was just it was just incredible to to the, the look of the movie. We we wouldn't have, we would never have been able to get to this stuff here in the States with our budget. So, yeah. you know, Thailand definitely gave us more bang for our buck. And, mm-hmm. uh, that's Krabi Island was just, you know, you're, you're, you're shooting on an Island. <laughs> I mean, it's like, how can you, can, how can you not complain? There was, there was a day where, uh, you know, we're, we're working once we start production, it's nonstop, even days off, you're kind of still working and uh in this case you know we needed to actually shoot some underwater footage of this uh, drone going toward a sunken ship that was out there in Krabi because it's a plot point mm-hmm. and uh uh so we went on on my day off uh on this boat and I couldn't dive because I'm not certified but I could you know hang and I could see the footage once they brought it up so I basically had brought my swim trunks and I just jumped into the ocean out in the middle of nowhere and just kind of sat there and floated while we were waiting for things. It was kind of, is even though it was work, it was just kind of peaceful and awesome in a strange way. So, oh. you know, you know, you, so it was a little tiny bit of, of, of kind of fun in the midst of the craziness. Yeah. Being in the eye of the storm of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just winding down here, Anthony, um, the, um, the main uh, was it one of the staples of uh, Sharknado is the uh, the music. Uh, your band Quint, um, that you and uh, Mr. Robbie Reese um, have uh, have uh, tour- toured with. Um, can you uh, tell us a little what about what we'll have in store for uh, Zombie Tidal Wave? Well, 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 with Zombie Tidal Wave, uh, we do we were kind of easing into that '80s vibe, mm-hmm. so it's present day, but they're a little like nods like you know one of our douchey characters is named blaine and he's wearing a pink polo shirt and a teal sweater around his neck so there's a lot lot of 80s kind of nods to this movie and so we knew that the music was going to probably be a little bit more 80s in style Mm -hmm. uh so you know it's a it's a little more punk a little more ska like we did a ska song called club dead uh, there's a kind of two punky songs. One's called Suck It, <laughs> and the other one's called Party to Raise the Dead. And there's a band in the movie. Play uh, lead singer is a uh, is a guy named Will J, who uh, amazing voice, very Bruno Mars voice. But we wanted him to sing this sort of punky song, and we named the band the Full Cheese. So that was another <laughs> reference. But uh, um, he. Um, he came to, to set after, you know, we sent him the song and he came, when I met him for the first time on set, he played his version of it. He played him singing it, but he brought his ukulele and he was playing on a ukulele, which was not the intent. It was just, he just wanted to show me what he was working on the vocally. And I'm going, dude, that's amazing. And, uh, and so I, we can't not, not have you do a version like that. So, so we kind of rewrote the script where, you know, he's in this band and, you know, he's singing in this sort of punk style, which is not him at all. Mm-hmm. And he kind of says, yeah, you know, it's not really me, but, you know, that's what Rena you know, ran like. And then later in the movie, he kind of gets to play the ukulele and sing it. So uh, that that was that was really fun 
to do with, with that music. So, so we have a new EP coming out, uh, and it should be out right before the release on iTunes and Spotify under Quint, and it's called Club Dead, and it has, uh, it has a bunch of songs that are in the movie, and um, it also has uh, you know, a couple songs that we, we did that, uh, you know, that are, are kind of leftovers. So, uh, so it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of an interesting little mix. I really like Suck It, though, because it was written for <laughs> this uh, douchebag character in the, in the movie, and it's, and it's, so, it's so punk. And mm-hmm. so it's so like that 1980s, like it's not true punk in the sense that it's di- gritty. It's that sort of kind of, uh, you know, uh, corporate punk that just, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little too polished, but it definitely has attitude. So, mm-hmm. uh, so, so that was a, that was a real fun song. Yeah. And, uh, going off of, uh, we, I know we touched on Sharknado, but I needed to ask you about the, uh, Sharknado ride that's now open and uh, how you feel about that? Yeah, I, I literally found out like three weeks ago that in Malaysia they, uh, they, they're they doing a Sharknado attraction at a theme park called Sunway Lagoon and uh, it's, you know, it's it's just like any uh, theme park. Uh, it's it's a it's a water park. It has rides, um, you know, it has animals, it has everything. And so uh, they, they have a three-year deal to have a Sharknado and um, I got to go to Malaysia last week and be there for the opening and and meet uh, all the people involved and yeah it's 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 pretty incredible it's they, they did a great job and uh, uh, they they're using the theme song Battle of the Sharknado throughout the park <laughs> and it's in, in a weird way it makes total sense like for for Sharknado to actually be at a water park just right and so. To, to see them kind of recreate, you know, the Finn's bar, you know, do things that we did in the movie. There's a lot of love. Yeah. It's the guy that uh, put this together and he just, you know, he, you can tell he loved the franchise. And then I, like again, there's so many bucket list things that have happened with uh, Sharknado. You know, from we had a slot machine, we had trading cards, we had a comic book, and this is this is up there. I think this this takes the cake in terms of like to be able to create a movie uh, that people like, but that also warrants something at a theme park. We replaced actually uh, the Ghostbusters attraction, cool. so. You know, so that's kind of that's even cooler that you know. Yeah. You know, we 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 took over their spot, so uh, and uh, it's it's kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. And if you ever have the Bill Murray cameo, that'd be a good uh, point of uh, contention with them, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Look, look. One, what one day, one day, I you know, a knock on wood, uh, Bill Murray will uh, will when I will cross paths. <laughs> I, I will hunt him down, and I'll give him five hundred bucks to be in one of my movies, and he'll go five hundred bucks. Well, okay. <laughs> you got your camera with you? It's like, yeah. As a matter of fact, here's my iPhone. Okay, let's get the scene. Great, we're done. Thank you, Bill. Here's the five. Uh, actually, I don't have five hundred bucks on me. Can you can you loan me five hundred bucks, Bill? Uh, yeah. Well, hey, you said I said five hundred. You did it with the iPhone, and then we'll get into a little tussle, and he might, you know, give me a noogie or something, and then eventually, uh, you know, it, it'll just be, you know, it'll just be love, and he'll be in every single movie I'm ever doing. So, you know, that 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 that's the idealized version of the Bill Murray Anthony C. Ferrante uh, union and bringing him to to my film world. That'd be a <laughs> be a great crossover. Yeah. So. And uh, just last question here, Anthony, um, what are you looking forward to with, uh, you know, the next couple of projects if, you know, uh, really, really, we really want this to succeed, Zombie Tidal Wave, um, anything to look forward to that you would want to, uh, tell, to uh, kind of inf- tell our listeners? Well, you know, we've been playing around There's a, with a lot of projects right now that we've been uh, working hard on. Um, I was... Uh, uh, hired to adapt a comic book called far away canyon into a, a tv series and so we did a sizzle reel and a and a pilot and a, a deck a, and we shot some scenes and stuff um so uh we've been we've been working on that it's basically 
if the 1950s atomic age monsters actually existed and what that would mean. And so, you know, the atomic age monsters, meaning, you know, like the big gigantic tarantulas and ants and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we came up with a really cool take on it that, that kind of went in a slightly different direction, but, uh, but it still kind of stays true to what the comic book was. And uh, we're, I just finished uh, two weeks ago the, a feature version of it because there was interest in turning it into a feature as well. So I don't know what's going to happen, whether it's uh, you know a feature or a TV show, but we're hoping that happens because it's, uh, it's, it's just, it'd just be such a fun project. It's, and it you know, has, the, has that kind of silly spirit that I, that I like to do, but it also has, a, has some fun stuff that you know, we've never had an opportunity to do either. Um, and I've also been working on a, a thriller called Agony that uh, we're, we, we almost did two years ago, but then Sharknado 6 happened. So um, we're looking at trying to get that off the ground. It needs to be shot in the snow. So, uh, you know, it would have to be set up in the fall uh, or winter. So we're, that's another one of those things. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's other stuff uh, popping up. So, you know, you just never know what the next thing's going to be. Uh, you, you, you can just start working on a bunch of things and, you know, vent, like Sharknado was an idea and it took two or three years before someone said, let's make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, that's kind of how you do it. I just, I just enjoy doing different things and I also love Sharknado. So, you know, I'll, I'll always be there for that main franchise, but, uh, you know, now's the time to kind of experiment with different corners of the genre or universe and, uh, we'll, we'll see where that leads. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, we look, uh, you know, everyone at the podcast look forward to whatever project you would have coming out. And, you know, we would hope uh, that you would uh, return again to the show. You're always a great guest. And, but and you weren't mean enough. So I'll have, to kind of, <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to take that into consideration. I'll also say that, like, look, you know, a dream project. Uh, you know, I, I got, I got to have a couple more successes, but I really, really like if I ever had an opportunity to do a superhero movie, yeah, I really want to do Moon Knight. Ever since I was a kid, I loved that, that comic book Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, I know someone's going to do it eventually. They keep talking about it coming into the Marvel universe, but I am the only person that should do the Moon Knight movie. Oh yeah. No, <laughs> Cause I... it's about a crazy person <laughs> and I'm crazy. So it, it just makes sense. So it's a, but and the thing that is that everybody knocks on Moon Knight like, oh, he's a poor man's Batman. Is like they don't get Moon Knight. If you look at Moon Knight and you look at Moon Knight's rogue gallery of villains, Moon Knight, uh, the original run, mm-hmm. has so many amazing and original and different villains um, that, that haven't really been exploited anywhere uh, outside of the Moon Knight comics. Occasionally they'll pop up in some other places, uh, but you know he's, he's so perfect. I think like Doctor Strange, you know, was sort of a, you know, you knew that Doctor Strange was going to be an interesting movie for for Marvel, but you didn't know how people were going to respond. And it was, you know, thankfully a a big success. And now they're going to kind of go into the horror direction. So I think if the next Doctor Strange is successful, I think that's going to really open the door to do Moon Knight because Moon Knight definitely leans in in the horror direction. Oh, yeah. Uh, So I'd I'd love to do it. Marvel, if you're listening, you know, (laughs) please uh, hire me. Uh, you gave James Gunn Guardians of the Galaxy. I will take care of Moon Knight and Mark Spector for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll send this off to Kevin Feige or try to yeah. <laughs> send it off. Would you want uh, Moon Knight to be Keanu Reeves, though, as uh, some people have fan-casted? Uh, yeah, actually, actually, Keanu could be a very interesting uh, Mark Spector. Uh, there, there's, there's a, there's a lot of people that can play Mark Spector, but the, the trick with him though is that he, you know, you know, a lot of these superheroes have alter egos. Uh, Mark Spector has a, or, or it's not, uh, yeah, it is Mark Spector. Mark Spector uh, has split personality, so he has, he has five different identities. Mm-hmm. Not five. Hold on, now, 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 now. Look, now then you're gonna say you don't know Moon Knight, but he has multiple <laughs> personalities, and he, you know, he plays Jake uh, uh, Lockley, the cab driver. He's Mark Spector. Uh, he's uh, Stephen Grant, a, a millionaire, uh, and so like he has all these personalities fighting with him, and so it, it, it would be really fascinating to get a, you know somebody in there that could literally transform themselves into each individual personality in a way that you know you would go, who is this person? Is this really that? So you know, I, I like I said, I think I think Keanu could do a really good job with it. So oh, yeah. uh, I think it'd be a great opportunity for him. But, um, 
you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, and the, it's going to end, it's going to enter the Marvel universe at some point. So yeah, I, mean, I just keep putting it out in the, I keep putting it out in the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, and you know, good chance of it happening and we'll, uh, definitely see. And, and the universe, you know, the cinematic universe will outlive us all. So, <laughs> yes, that will. Yeah. It'll be the only movies ever released. Everything else will go straight to streaming after that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but, uh, but Anthony, we're running out of time. Um, I just wanted to uh, just have you just plug all of the social medias um, for yourself and anything related to the project and just all the info for Zombie Tidal Wave uh, before, we, uh, before we wrap. Well, you can find me at AC Ferrante, F E R R A N T E, on Twitter. You can find me at Anthony C. Ferrante on Instagram. You can find Zombie Tidal Wave on Twitter at Zombie Tidal Wave. You can find uh, Instagram at Zombie Tidal. And uh, my, our band, uh, Quint, you can find Quint at Quint the Band on Twitter. Cool. cool. Well, uh, definitely recommend following all the accounts to uh, just follow the movie. And um, Anthony, thank you so much um, for your time uh, being on the show once more. And uh, yeah, just talking Bill Murray and Moon Knight and zombies. It was a good conversation, my friend. Well, it, well we should also mention Zombie Tidal Wave airs this weekend on Sci-Fi, August 17th at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. So uh, check it out. And uh, remember, just when you thought it was safe to be dead, Zombie Tidal Wave. <laughs> yeah, be sure to check it out. Cool, cool. Great. Thank you so much, Gene. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And what, we've been professionally unprofessional. 